Hello there. Welcome to video 175 from Sumit Academy. I do hope that you have subscribed to my channel. Do subscribe now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. And do remember to like and share this video too. Do remember that the videos in my YouTube channel are for you to use for your examination purposes. They are free to use and will always remain free for you all. Do use the information in these videos to the best of your ability to succeed in your endeavor to join the civil services. To make your task a little easier, here is a complete list of all the 175 videos available on my YouTube channel. The list is divided into the playlists under which they are available. Do have a look. In this video, we shall study the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act 2019. The objective of this act was to end the special status accorded to Jammu and Kashmir in the Indian Union, divide the state into two union territories and extend all provisions of the constitution to these two new union territories. The introduction of the bill in parliament was preceded by a presidential order under Article 370 of the Indian Constitution that revoked Jammu and Kashmir's special status. Article 370 was the basis of Jammu and Kashmir's accession to the Indian Union at a time when erstwhile princely states had the choice to join either India or Pakistan after their independence from British rule in 1947. Article 370 came into effect in 1949. It allowed the state of Jammu and Kashmir to have jurisdiction to make its own laws in all matters except finance, defense, foreign affairs, and communications. It established a separate constitution and a separate flag and denied property rights in the region to outsiders. This meant that the residents of the state lived under different laws from the rest of the country in matters 
such as property, ownership and citizenship. So far, Parliament had only residuary powers of legislation in Jammu and Kashmir. This included enacted laws to prevent terror and secessionist activities and for taxation on foreign and inland travel and communication. Now, let us have a brief look at the important provisions of the Act. The first one is the provision for a Lieutenant Governor. The Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir will be administered by the President through an Administrator appointed by him and known as the Lieutenant Governor. The same will be the case for the Union Territory of Ladakh. The Act provides for a Legislative Assembly for the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The total number of seats in the Assembly will be 107. Of these, 24 seats will remain vacant on account of certain areas of Jammu and Kashmir being under the occupation of Pakistan. Seats will be reserved for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes in proportion to their population in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The Lieutenant Governor may nominate two women members to the Legislative Assembly if women are not adequately represented. The Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir will have a Council of Ministers of not more than 10% of the total number of members in the Assembly. The Council will aid and advise the Lieutenant Governor on matters that the Assembly has powers to make laws on. The High Court of Jammu and Kashmir will be the common High Court for the Union Territories of Ladakh and Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir will have an Advocate General to provide legal advice to the Government of the Union Territory. The Central Government will appoint advisory committees for various purposes including distribution of assets and liabilities of corporations of the state of Jammu and Kashmir between the two Union Territories. Issues related to the generation and supply of electricity and water and issues related to the Jammu and Kashmir State Financial Corporation will also be looked into. The schedule lists 106 central laws that will be made applicable to the two Union Territories. These include the Aadhaar Act 2016, the Indian Penal Code 1860 and the Right to Education Act 2009. It repeals 153 state laws of Jammu and Kashmir. 166 state laws will remain in force and seven laws will be applicable with amendments. Now, these amendments include lifting of prohibition on the lease of land to persons who are not permanent residents of Jammu and Kashmir. The Election Commission will conduct polls for the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir as per the allocation of seats specified in the Delimitation of Parliamentary Constituencies Order 1976. After the abrogation of Article 370, all central laws and state laws of Jammu and Kashmir would be applicable to the new Union Territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Police and public order are to be with the centre. What is the impact of this Act? Well, the Act is proved that the long reign of the 1954 order has ended. The 1954 order had introduced a proviso to Article 3, namely that 
no bill providing for increasing or diminishing the area of the state of jammu and kashmir or altering the name or boundary of that state shall be introduced in parliament without the consent of the legislature of that state that power of the state legislature to give prior consent does not exist anymore with the removal of the 1954 order the power of the state legislature ceases to exist and parliamentary laws including that of reservation would apply to jammu and kashmir as it does to other parts of the country the removal of the 1954 order also negates a clause which was added to article 352 the order had mandated that no proclamation of emergency on grounds only of internal disturbance or imminent danger shall have effect in the state unless with the concurrence of the state government the government called this the end of positive discrimination and the closing of the chasm between the residents of jammu and kashmir and citizens of other parts of the country the rationale behind this move was that article 370 has prevented jammu and kashmir to merge with india rather than being a basis of its merger article 370 was seen as discriminatory on the basis of gender class cast and place of origin post the repeal of article 370 doors to private investment in jammu and kashmir were opened which will in turn increase the potential for development there increased investments would lead to increased job creation and further betterment of socio economic infrastructure in the state opening of buying of lands would bring in investments from private individuals and multinational companies and give a boost to the local economy well that's all from me in this video this video is based on the information freely available on the internet no originality is claimed for the same The intention of this video is only to prepare candidates for answering examination questions on the subject and not for any financial gains. Do like and share this video and do subscribe for my channel now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. Till later then cheerio